So a very, very warm welcome to everyone that's joining me this evening, either live. I know a lot of people listen on Listen Again. Uh, so this evening is our beginner's crypto session intended for people that have a relatively low starting knowledge uh, for crypto. Uh, so my name is Catherine Waller and I'm managing director for Daxi in the UK and Europe. Uh, unfortunately, those two are two separate things now. Um, so this is one of my favorite sessions. So um, we very much use this session to introduce people uh, to crypto uh, and to Daxi as a business. So I'm just gonna share uh, my screen. So I need to move a few things around. So I very much appreciate you joining me. So the UK today is cold and wet and rainy. Um, so I very much appreciate you uh, keeping me company. So if I just share that, hopefully that's worked. Can I have a thumbs up if you can see some slides, please? I'm looking at you, Hugh and David. You're always very good at telling me that you can see the right thing. So um, a quick disclaimer, um, the presentation I'm gonna give you this evening Apologies, had a few problems there. Um, so the presentation I'm going to provide to you this evening does not constitute financial advice, uh, trading advice or investment advice. Rather, it is intended to be education, inspiration and information about Daxi. Um, so if you're listening live, there is a chat function. So please feel free uh, to make any comment or ask any questions. I'll try and keep an eye on comments uh, whilst I'm speaking. But we'll have a really good opportunity for questions and answers at the end. So I just want to show you um, a few slides. Um, this is to me what someone who is new to crypto uh, would probably be, be keen to know. Um, so if you're not aware of Daxi, there's a few people listening live that I think are fairly new to what Daxi does. Um, Daxi is a crypto exchange. So one of the places that you can buy, store and learn about cryptocurrency. So one of the things I say to people that know literally nothing about us is that if you buy your holiday money, for me, I go to a lady at the supermarket who has a little booth. Um, I go there to buy euros or dollars or what have you. We do exactly the same thing and we allow people to exchange their normal British pounds for uh, cryptocurrency. And um, we do that online so you can store your crypto online in your wallet. Um, well, we're considered to be the authority in teaching people about crypto. The vast majority of our platform users often come to us having never ever bought crypto before. So we're very education focused, we're education led, we give out a huge amount of free resources um, and we really seek to be the authority in getting people started uh, on their crypto journey. Uh, so over the next 15 or 20 minutes or so I'm going to cover the basics of crypto, how it all works, uh, what you need to know, uh, how you can make money out of crypto, why people are using crypto as an asset class uh, looking for good returns, what to avoid. Um, obviously, there's a lot of problems with the crypto industry. There's been bad products, bad exchanges, um, and frankly, some bad companies. So we'll talk about keeping yourself safe uh, if you're looking to purchase crypto. Where we're at in the investment cycle, obviously, um, the market does move quite a lot. So what's going on right now? And of course, uh, how you can get involved. So um, Daxi is really considered an authority in this space. I personally write for crypto uh, magazines a lot. Um, so we're often quoted in the press about what's going on in crypto as an industry, what's going on with prices, where we see things going. Um, so this is just a handful of the publications that I've personally written for this year. Um, I was also told earlier today, which is exciting, hot, hot news off the press. Um, I've been actually been nominated for a uh, Rising Star of Crypto Award, which is quite exciting. So I am considered a press authority in my own right. So I'm well placed to tell you um, about crypto and what's going on um, in the marketplace. I've also got a very busy blog. Uh, I blog about scaling up Daxi as a business and you can find all the content uh, online through various social media channels about what Daxi is up to and what we think is going on in the industry. So I want to talk about um, what's going on in the UK right now today. Obviously, um, we're in some really, really tough times. Uh, I've just broken my working day. It's 8 p.m. in the UK right now. So I've just spent about 40 minutes walking around my local neighborhood, um, just kind of digesting the day. And I was talking to my walking companion about what bizarre times we live in right now. So a lot of our customers that come to us, um, obviously, are, they're new to crypto. And typically, they're diversifying into other assets. Uh, because, you know, traditional assets are not doing so well. So um, this is a little graph that I did earlier today. Um, it's the extract of the FTSE 100 
uh, for year to date, so from the 1st of January. So coronavirus has seen about $9 trillion worth of value wiped off stocks globally. Um, but in the UK, we've seen about 22% come off the FTSE 100. So our top 100 traded companies, it's obviously a good health check for the UK uh, economy. And of course, lots of our various sort of savings and investment products are based on that, um, and particularly on the pensions. So obviously really dreadful for lots of savers um, that we've lost about 22% uh, of our value. Uh, let me just do the next slide. Um, and of course, the savings rates are really bad right now. So um, if you're not aware, the savings rate in the UK, the Bank of England base rate, um, is the lowest ever on record. So the couple of hundred years that the Bank of England has existed, uh, we've never seen lower, lower interest rates. Um, there's also a little bit of talk about potentially having negative interest rates by the end of the year. Um, so that would mean that we actually, if we have cash in the bank, have to write the bank check for looking after it. So you've probably seen communications from your high street bank in the last couple of weeks. Um, so the average sort of savings rate tends to be uh, 1% or under. So of course, when inflation outstrips that, um, it's technically costing you money uh, to leave it in the bank. So for that reason, lots of platform users we have at Daxi um, are seeking to switch some of their cash um, into crypto. The other thing, of course, is that in the UK, we very much relied on the performance of the property markets, whether that's the house that you live in or people that have purchased buy to let properties. Um, it was true that over a long period of time, uh, house prices went up. Um, that, of course, was reversed a little bit over the 2008 crash, took a couple of years for that to come back. And of course, more recently, buy to let landlords have been finding some tough times. I'm one of them. Um, the taxation um, situation has changed, rental yields are down. And of course, there's lots of people that are renting they're going to struggle to pay their rent um, in the coming weeks and months. And I was actually writing some press coverage uh, today um, about the fact that even before coronavirus, um, in September last year, a housing charity called Shelter put out some analysis that a significant proportion of the UK that live in rented accommodation were only one month away from being homeless. If they lost their jobs, um, they'd be able to afford their rent for only one month. So before the coronavirus, uh, obviously we had some serious problems in our rental market. Um, there's a lot of analysis. Obviously we've had these mortgage holidays. Um, there's actually a six month period now. If you want to evict a tenant, you have to wait six months to do it. So lots of pain coming um, for property investors. We do a lot of work uh, with big property businesses and property investors that want to talk about um, diversifying uh, into crypto. So quite simply, cryptocurrency has done very well this year. Um, to my knowledge, it's the best performing asset class on the face of the planet. So these are some of the gains year to date. So if you'd invested in crypto on the 1st of January, with Ethereum be up 177%, Bitcoin's up 45%, uh, the DAC, which is the community coin that Daxi has, is up 58%, Litecoin's up 14%, and the FTSE, by contrast, is down 22%. So just for that reason, lots of people that traditionally would not have considered crypto um, now see some of the pheno phenomenal gains that are being made uh, by the industry as a whole. Um, and obviously are very much interested in those kinds of returns. So I just want to talk about um, some of what props up the crypto industry. Um, obviously, there were lots of people that bought in 2017 that made huge gains. You know, people buying Bitcoin were looking at a thousand percent returns. Um, and I've met some of those people and think, you know, they were very brave to come on board with an industry that really didn't have much traction, didn't have much track record. So I just want to talk about some of what's propping up that industry. When you look at some of those returns over the various coins, they've done very well. Um, but what really has created that is, is particularly interesting. So let's just talk about blockchain for a minute. So blockchain is the underlying technology for cryptocurrencies, very simply a new type of database. Uh, traditionally, a database was held in one place and you ping it for information. Now, a database tends to be held across the users and sometimes referred to as a distributed ledger technology. And you'll see that technology being deployed across a huge number of industries. Um, so the technology itself is, you know, a couple of decades old, but more recently it's been employed by a number of industries, household names, um, whether it's infrastructure or health tech um, or banking or payments. Um, there's a huge amount of numbers of businesses that are using it. For me personally, um, Daxi is actually my third blockchain business. Um, I've done some board advisory work for a number of blockchain businesses, um, and lots of industries are embracing it um, as a technology. But turning particularly to finance and retail, I think it's very critical to ask, you know, is crypto real? Is it coming? Is it here? Is it valid? And I think a couple of years ago, even the most fanatical of crypto fans would have really struggled to talk about uh, how far that was being adopted. 
So I think, you know, is crypto real is a, is a really serious question. And also, how big is that audience? Uh, there's no point buying an asset which only a relatively small number of people are, are interested in. And a lot of the press analysis that I put out talks about crypto a couple of years ago was very much niche. It was very much for the youngsters. It was hip. It was trendy. It was quite nerdy. And now you see that audience phenomenally growing. And I'll just talk about a couple of examples of that. Um, so if you look at the big payment companies, uh, MasterCard uh, has crypto wallet projects and has 80 patents in blockchain technology. Um, Visa similarly has got 24 patents in blockchain technology, and you can actually pay today in crypto via their relationship with Coinbase. Um, they're investing in funding crypto startups, um, and over the summer this year, they announced they'd be working very closely to help people that have crypto platforms um, actually expose that uh, to their client base. So bearing in mind that Visa is used by a billion people, um, that's, that's a significant um, audience. They have about 61 million merchants that use it. Um, and Visa also works with global policymakers, including the World Economic Forum, um, to assist on making policy recommendations um, around central bank digital currencies that I'll talk about. Um, PayPal similarly is used in 200 countries. They also hold patents in blockchain. Um, and they also announced this summer they'll be offering crypto to their 321 million users. So I'll just give you those numbers again. Um, Visa has got 61 million merchants used by a billion people. PayPal has got 321 million users. People like me use both, so that's great. There's a bit of crossover there, but that's a huge, huge audience um, who are now embracing crypto. Um, also some of the world's biggest retail businesses, um, eBay's announced they want to include Bitcoin as a way of paying on their platform. Um, Amazon is collaborating with blockchain businesses um, and you can spend crypto today um, at Amazon, Starbucks and Uber via Fold. So all of those businesses are really investing, you know, tens of millions of pounds on updating their platforms. One of the examples I use, um, if you're old enough to remember when you used to play with your, with your checkbook and you had that little machine that took an imprint of your check guarantee card, um, that's a technology we probably haven't seen in British shops for 10 or maybe 15 years. So you do get waves of adoption and waves of new technology coming in um, and crypto very much is the next wave. Uh, coming and in fact um, there's a lot of evidence that's already here. So the other thing that you see at a national level is a lot of the national banks coming on board. Um, so the central banks of course are the country's banks um, and a lot of those are working on what's called digitizing their currency. So having a purely digital version of their national currency that includes the Bank of England um, and lots of chat in the EU which I appreciate uh, it's probably a bit of a sore topic in the UK because we're no longer part of it. Um, but the EU confirmed that by 2024, they will release new rules, um, which will streamline being able to make payments across Europe by leveraging blockchain and crypto assets. And it's really part of a much broader shift. So even for people that hate crypto, they don't like it, they don't get it, they don't want to be part of it. Um, it's highly likely um, in the relatively near future, um, you'll be using it, um, albeit for a lot of people probably uh, unknowingly. So you see a lot of these really big banks coming on board. Um, crypto obviously is a faster, quicker, better way of conferring value. Um, so people often talk about it as money updated, money reimagined, um, a better version of current finance. And it's a significant cost saver. So it's quicker, cheaper and faster. Um, a good example of that is Bitfinex moved $1.1 billion worth of Bitcoin, um, which at the time was its largest transaction. And that cost less than a dollar. So unsurprisingly, lots of these big infrastructure businesses are interested uh, in that as a technology. Um, so a good example of that are some of the tier one banks like Citi and JP Morgan. Um, BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager. They have just under $7 trillion worth of uh, assets under management. Um, DTCC is a um, processor of securities uh, and by far the highest value of in the world, which is great. And they've got blockchain projects. And you'll see a lot of the um, big hedge funds and asset managers coming out in praise of crypto. Um, so a good example of that is Renaissance Technology have a big fund called the Medallion Fund. Um, you'll see some of the big um, hedge funds like Paul Tudor Jones talking about how great Bitcoin is to hedge against inflation. And some of those really big banks that have spent a couple of years saying crypto is never going to work out, it's not really an asset class, um, are now coming to the table. So my favourite one, um, is that Goldman Sachs started the summer with a, a PowerPoint call, a Zoom call uh, to their uh, client bank saying, you know, crypto is not an asset class. Um, but by the end of the summer, uh, announced that they'd hired a new global head 
to oversee its digital assets and were also working on their own crypto projects. So the effect of that obviously has been very positive for crypto, hence some of those great increases in value. Um, so this is an extract from an ebook that we put out, which you can find online, it's free. I'll put the, uh, the link in the comments or you can uh, grab it from uh, the links below. So you can see over that life cycle, Bitcoin has had some phenomenal growth. Um, there have been a number of booms, of course, followed by a correction. But you can see on each crash that it's always followed um, by further growth, which is fantastic. So if you look at some of those daily volumes, um, I was looking today, I'm broadcasting this on the 5th of October. Uh, when I looked earlier today, there'd been £45 billion pounds worth of Bitcoin traded over a 24-hour period. There is a substantial demand for people that want the asset. Um, and of course, with each drop, there's gone on to be further growth. And a lot of the analysis that we've done as a business looks at that the next boom will be generated by those institutional investors. And it's our opinion in the near future, the vast majority of crypto the blue chip crypto assets will be owned by the banks um, and more importantly um, fidelity recently came out and said that they estimate that a third of institutions already own crypto so there's been an awful lot of chat about oh you know the the banks aren't quite sure about it but already a third of them um, are exposed to crypto assets so let me just go on one slide um, so I want to talk about um, what we mean by crypto when Daxi talks about crypto we're very conscious that there is a large number um, of assets. So there's just over 7,200 cryptocurrencies today. So it's a huge variety of people that are new to the industry to try and uh, make themselves knowledgeable about a big number um, is a real challenge. So some of those daily traded volumes, this is from um, earlier today, Bitcoin 45 billion, Ethereum 9.4 billion, Litecoin 1.7. We're very focused on what's called blue chip crypto. So the reputable, well-established coins um, that the institutions are interested in. And just to be clear, that relatively short list accounts for just over 60% of all traded volume. So I'll say that one more time. There's 7,200 different coins, uh, and yet three of them are over 60% of the daily traded volume. So we want to make sure um, that we're involved in coins that are um, established um, and wanted by those institutions. And particularly at the moment, um, I'll show you some screenshots from the wallet over the next couple of slides. But obviously, it's some really tough times. So if people that are purchasing crypto, you know, they need to know if there's a rainy day that they can exit um, if they have to for any reason. Um, so, of course, you know, being able to sell as and when you need to um, is key. So a quick summary of what the Daxi exchange does. I've mentioned we do exactly what the holiday money people do. We let people purchase crypto uh, via our platform. So our tagline is that we make crypto easy to understand. So you can buy, hold um, and exchange your crypto for lovely British pounds. Um, we're very focused on retail customers. Um, we don't really cater to people that want to trade. Some of our customers use the platform to trade crypto, but for most people, they're looking for, to hold uh, for the short to medium term. Uh, we make that safe, easy and secure. I'll talk about our IT security rating on the next slide. Uh, we're licensed in Europe and we have a UK office. Lots of the exchanges are in very weird and far flung places. Uh, we plan to list on the London Stock Exchange. We're on record as saying we are hoping to do that next year, uh, which is something that our CEO has uh, already achieved. And we're the only exchange that provides the education and community to support our users. And we also believe that we have the largest client service team uh, per platform user of any crypto business. But our long term aim for the DAC coin, which unfortunately I haven't quite got enough time to talk about today, is that we seek to be a crowdfunding business for up and coming tech businesses. Um, so for that reason, our DAC coin has done really well. Um, a lot of people that uh, were part of the DAC early on have made uh, three digit returns, which is fantastic. Um, and the DAC coin itself is up 58% this year, which is uh, fantastic and very good news for all the people that hold, hold DAC. So just wanted to show you the um, security rating. Um, if like me, you're old enough to remember when phone banking came in um, and then uh, online banking came in, um, obviously it's really key to make sure that your assets are safe if you're storing them online. Um, and to store crypto, you have two options. You can either store on essentially what's a bit like a dongle um, or you can store online. So in order to do that, you of course have to be confident that your assets are safe. So the independent security rating for uh, Daxi is A+, plus. there is no higher rating. Um, I looked this up a couple of days ago, you're welcome to look it up today. You can go to Motsada Observatory, it's free free to have a look at, you can do it any time of day or night. 
Um, and we rate A+, plus, um, which is higher than a good number of crypto exchanges out there. Um, and actually, I'm yet to come across a high street bank that has an A plus rating um, for their platform, which is a, a huge compliment. And the Dexy has two separate programs. Um, we have what's called the Blue Chip Bundle. So anyone that um, is involved with Dexy has their own platform, uh, own account on our platform. You set that up in your own name or in your company name. Um, you can either um, be involved with the bundle, which is split automatically 50% Bitcoin, 20% Ethereum, 10% Litecoin, and 20% DAC. Um, that's been very popular for people that are looking for diversification. Um, over the last year, it has phenomenally outperformed a pure Bitcoin purchase uh, by about 100%. So the split across the various coins um, has been popular. We also have a DAC pack, which, as I mentioned, um, has done about 58% this year. That's our community coin, uh, which is very focused on maximum capital growth. And we also give our customers a 50% bonus at the point of purchase, just a little bit of a sales incentive. Um, and for both those programs, the starting uh, level, the minimum entry level for the platform is £100. So right now today, um, approximately 70% of our business is repeat purchase. A lot of our customers um, purchase crypto uh, repeatedly over a period of time, which is a huge compliment. Uh, so currently we only accept cash purchase, um, but we do hope to be able to accept ISA and pension purchases uh, in the relatively near future. So the buying process is very simple. Um, we have a really user-friendly uh, website, so you can set up an account very easily and online. Uh, we are required by the FCA to do what's called KYC, which is Know Your Client, um, which requires you to upload a proof of ID, which is photographic, such as a passport or a driving license, um, plus a proof of address, um, such as a bank statement, which is dated within three months. Um, you can then fund your account um, and sit back and enjoy. So this is actually a screenshot um, of what the, the platform looks like. So very similar to an online banking app. Um, you can keep a view of what's happening with crypto and what your crypto holdings um, are worth. So we try and keep these sessions um, fairly short and sweet. So um, hopefully some of what I've said is a good introduction to crypto. Uh, we have a lot of learning um, resources, whether they're webinars or we have eBooks, we have a lot of um, resources online that you can access for free. There's never any cost and they're easily accessible, whether it's webinars or social media content. Um, there's a lot of free resources. So do get hold of whoever um, introduced you to Daxi to get some more information about that. Um, and so hopefully this has been a great session. I'm just gonna stop my share um, and I'll just stop recording.